Well, hi guys, it's Sandy and I am back with another of my Rush to Christmas colorings. And this time I'm gonna paint a colorful night sky. I've got this really cute set from Penny Black. And if you um, turn it sideways, you can see there's a little girl and a little dog. It, it looks like me and Giallo and we are just, you know, throwing snowballs in the air or something. I thought it would be fun to create a really pretty sky for them. Like they're throwing something up in the air and it's just creating a magical rainbow in a night sky. That was my vision for it. So let's see if I can accomplish that. So I'm going to start with yellow, of course, because there's yellow involved in everything in my life that's pretty. So I'm throwing in some yellow into an area where I just painted a lot of water and then I'm dropping in a bunch of color. And then I'm going to go red right next to it. Now, it doesn't matter what shades I'm using. You can use whatever shades of colors that you want to. Uh, just watch the pigment. The trick for these is making sure that you're using about the same amount of pigment versus water in each one of the mixtures. So you don't want one to be really watery and one to be really thick because the the blending is going to happen the, the most nice ways when they're both about the same. They're going to look the most even. So here I'm going to throw in some purple and this one got a little bit on the watery side so I'm tapping in more pigment. And the whole time I'm watching what's happening. I'm trying not to let any areas, any of the leading edges, those outside edges, I'm trying not to let them dry too much because then the blending's not going to happen. So I'm going to keep them wet. I got to work fast enough that they stay wet. And I'm going to do it on both sides. You could start at one edge and then start working your whole way across and you only have one edge to deal with. But since I wanted this to kind of radiate out from the middle, I ended up doing two edges at once. And I'm also fighting trying to paint around the image too. So that's another pain in the butt thing. But if you did this just on a panel without the images stamped on it and then die cut your images to put on top, it might be easier if you're new to this and wanted to try it. So now I'm going to go with a dark blue on the very, very outside edge. And I'm trying to upside down figure out what my horizon line is going to be. That may, you know, may need to change as we go. So if I don't draw it in, then I can adjust it or I could have just taken a pen and drawn it in with a waterproof pen like a Sharpie. So now I want to add strength to my colors. I wanted this to be really rich, dark pigment. If I had started out with rich, dark pigment, I wouldn't have as many options to kind of fuss around with it a little bit. So that's why I'm going back in to add more color and it's also helping me to keep all of this pigment wet because I'm just going to continue to drop more color in. So the color uh, colors that I have going on is Indian Throne out at the outside edge, Phthalo Blue, then it goes into, I think that was uh, Carbazol Violet, and then Coral, uh, Quinacridone Coral, and then the center one, what was that yellow? Oh, New Gamboge, only the best yellow out there. There you go. So those are the colors that I was using. But I'm trying to narrow that area in the middle where they're kind of splashing that color up into the sky. So I'm bringing those colors in closer and closer while reserving, of course, enough area for that yellow to really sing. But now I'm going to throw in a sort of watery new gamboge. A little less, I mean, it's got plenty of pigment, but it's got a lot of water in it, so it's a little less thick which means it's going to push out some of those colors. This kind of background thing is just fun to play with because you can mess around with how much water is in one and how much is in another so that you can almost force those colors to do things to each other. I'm watching the yellow while I'm even painting more of that dark blue because I wanted to make sure I don't end up with any, I, I've got some blotchy areas there and I'll try to eliminate them if I can. But I'm watching the yellow in the middle and watching how that red is starting to feather into the blue and seeing, do I want more? Do I want to add more water in that center area? Do I want to add more pigment in it? If you want it to stop, then add more pigment. So say I wanted that red to carry, to, to stop that yellow from coming in, then I could add more like really heavy red pigment. But what I decided is I wanted that yellow to burst out a little bit more, so I added some water just now so that I can start creating almost some controlled blends 
in that yellow and start letting it push out. But then it was getting too white in there, so I had to go back in with a little pigment. So now I've got a lot of pigment and water pushing out through there. It's starting to collect at the bottom. And that's because this whole board is tipped a little bit toward me. So the area where the sentiment is, is the part that's away from us. So that's at the top of the screen that's raised up just a little bit. I think it's just a roll of tape that I had under there. So it was not a whole lot, but it's pushing all this pigment down and it's starting to collect at the top. I will just trim that off, that whole top edge. So if it gets a little bit uneven, it's okay. But I'm adding more thick pigment of that, uh, that phthalo blue so that it kind of pushes all that red and yellow color back toward the center. Because the, the stuff in the center has more water in it and the stuff on the outside has more pigment. So it's this kind of a background is almost a science experiment to try to just play with it, see where you can force pigment to move and where you can force it to stop. And you, I could sit here and play with this kind of thing forever. I did two tests on this beforehand and, and just played with them for, I don't know, a half hour each, which was a little excessive. But once I kind of got the hang of how much color I wanted and the fact that I really did want this rich color, I thought, yeah, let's give it a shot here on video and see how it goes. So then I filled in that little area between the scarf and the dress and then it's time to let it dry. And I did let it air dry because that's the kind of person I am. I like to air dry, I don't like to heat set. Because the heat setting, I don't know, it, it causes the pigment to do funny things. In this particular case, the blue didn't dry as smooth as I was hoping, but I'm not going to abandon it. And I hope you don't either when things like that happen because all you have to do is put some snow or some stars over it. In an image like this, on a card front like this, Anybody who gets it is going to be so lost in looking at that beautiful yellow and red swoosh of color and all that, those beautiful feathered edges that if they don't see perfect blending in the blue sky, no one is going to care. And I always am of the, the theory that if you put your emphasis, put your time and your energies into the most important part in the image. So on this one, the background was the thing that I wanted to sing. I, of course, wanted the little girl and her little doggy to be having fun, but I wanted the background to be the most important thing, so I spent the most of my time on it. And I'm going to put just a little bit of color into the rest of the image using my same reds and yellows and be able to make those coordinate with the colors in the sky. But I'm not going to worry about putting blending and shading and all kinds of crazy things in it. Now I am doing something here. You can see there's like a little spout of yellow moving into her, her red outfit. And yeah, that happens because people like me can't wait for something to dry. That's how life goes in my world. I, I have that problem often, but it's not hard to fix. Uh, sometimes you'll just have to wait to fix it once it's all dried, but for the most part I just try to pull out a little bit of the color if I can with a, a dry brush and then save it to repaint later. And then you can also just repaint another layer of the color on top afterward and call it done for the most part. So here I'm just going to add a little more color to her outfit to compensate for having thrown water in there to try to fix that yellow just to add a little more strength of color to that. And of course to the little doggy, who looks just like my Giallo. My Giallo is starting to get a little pudgy belly, like, like the little uh, golden retriever that he is. He's not fat yet, but he likes his treats and he does like to steal his sister's food. She is my fussy eater who I have to actually sit with her and watch her eat or she will not eat her food. And if I leave the two of them with a bowl of food, <laughs> the one who eats it is my boy Giallo. So I gotta watch him and not give him too many treats. So here we go, the card with the beautiful stars in the sky. No one's going to be looking at the blending or not blending of that background because it's just so much fun. So I hope you'll try something crazy and wild like this on one of your watercolor backgrounds. If you're watching this at a non-Christmas time of the year, non-winter, 
feel free to try it on a summer card too, because you could do the same kind of thing all year round. Thank you so much for watching. Click that like button if you have not yet. You can subscribe to get more videos from me, watch another video, whatever you'd like to do, and I will see you next time.